Hello, everybody. There's a few familiar faces coming to join in. So great to see you all, man. Hi, Elaine. Hope all's going well. Hope you guys are all surviving the lockdown. You know, it's, uh, it's tough. I'm not going to talk about that too much. I'm going to keep this positive. <clears throat> We're just going to give this a few minutes, just allow everyone to join in. Great to see the familiar faces. That's awesome. Hi, Peter. How's it going? Hi, Alyssa. Woke up at 5 a.m. Thank you so much. That's proper dedication. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, now, as, as with the other um, webinars, we'll be doing a QA and a as well. Um, I'll try and answer the questions as we go along, but otherwise I'll get back to them um, sort of towards the end of the webinar. Um, I will be sharing a, a few things from, uh, from my screen as well. Obviously, we're going to be working through some stuff in Lightroom. So I'm going to be sharing uh, my screen with you. And uh, I hope, how's it, Linda? How's it going? I hope you guys, um, if you do have your laptops open in front of you, if you have Lightroom open, uh, please do so. Then we can work through this together. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I think that's, um, I think most of the people are in. I think we're still waiting for about four or five. But um, I'm going to start with this so long. And panoramas is the thing that I've really sort of started enjoying over the last year or so. I think it's, it's a fantastic way to, to showcase your images in, in a different way. And it's also something that a lot of people don't actually think about when it comes to wildlife photography. All right, we've all got mobile phones, yeah. Um, a lot of these phones now, pretty much all of them, have got the panorama um, effect built into them. You know, we can use panoramas. But a lot of the people um, have used um, or use panoramas from a landscape point of view. Obviously, it's a lot easier. Your, um, your subjects are, are still, they're not moving. Whereas with wildlife, it becomes a little bit tricky. You know, a lot of the times, when you're photographing wildlife, things happen quickly. And, you know, panoramas is not definitely not a case for every um, scene that's in front of you. It's very specific in when and how you can use it. Hi, Vikram. Hi, Sanit. Great to see you guys. Ida, great to see you guys. Anya. So I'm going to talk about the, the sort of when, why, why and how from a, from a panorama point of view. But I think it's important to understand, like I mentioned, it's not in every case that you can use it. Um, it's definitely, with, especially with wildlife, first of all, you've got to have a subject that is relatively um, stationary. You obviously can't do this with a, with a scene of hunting or a river crossing in front of you. So it's got to be a subject that is relatively stationary. And why I would use um, panoramas personally is over the past, I think it's about maybe six or eight months, I've started sort of challenging myself a lot more when it comes to uh, wildlife photography, I think a lot of the times, you know, we, you get into a comfort zone where you have a zoom lens and you always just um, sort of zoom out and, and create nice images. But over time, your images sort of, it's the same old, same old over time, if, if that makes sense. And I think it's important that we all challenge ourselves uh, from a photographic point of view. Linda, I know we, we spoke about this um, a little while ago with, you know, you get to a stage where you start feeling a little bit bored with the, the images that you're creating and it all sort of starts becoming a little bit monotonous. So personally for me, I love carrying uh, prime lenses out in the field. So what these are, it's a fixed focal lens. So 300, 400, 500, 600 more lenses. You get great quality with it. It's often fantastic in low light. But the downside of this is you can't zoom in or out, right? So you, you're stuck at that particular focal length. And then often you end up chopping off um, tails of animals or ears or whatever it may be. And by using panoramas, this is a fantastic way of not only getting that amazing quality, but also being able to stitch images together that you, know, you don't chop off anything in your, in your subject. 
So I'm going to go straight into uh, Lightroom. I'm going to need your guys' help with this a little bit, um, just to let me know if you guys can see it. See it clearly. Let's have a look. Um, can you all see that all right? I think, um, I think that's showing up. Let's just have a look. Uh, yeah, all good, all good, perfect. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna start off, like I mentioned, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> As I mentioned, a lot of the times people see this from a landscape point of view, you know, when it comes to panoramas. So here's a particular case um, where we were in the Ngorogoro crater and, you know, trying to put the Ngorogoro crater in one image is virtually almost impossible. Yeah, it's so big, it's so vast. And in order to try and capture more of that, a panorama is a fantastic way to showcase more of your, of your overall scene. I'm going to just take you guys through what the, what the images look like uh, from stitching together. So obviously you start off on the left hand side, and this is basically, I think it's about eight or nine, maybe even more images that I took together um, to then stitch in Lightroom. And then you end up with something like this, right? Now you can see it's, it's very wide, it's very narrow, very wide. And often in landscape that can work. But when it comes to wildlife, you know, a lot of the times your subject is as important, if not more important than your, uh, I mean, your, your background, sorry, is often more important than your subject. You know, a lot of the times you're dealing with beautiful skies and beautiful scenery that you want to try and include. So by doing it landscape, you know, the normal way you would hold the camera, by doing it in landscape, you're actually reducing your foreground and you're also reducing the skies that you have that can often play such a vital role in your, in your image. So from landscape point of view, and I, I just want to point this out as well, Remember this, I mean, it's obviously not moving. So from a landscape point of view, you could, you could take 15, 20, even more images and stitch them together. So what landscape photographers would often do is they might, shooting in landscape mode, um, take a few images of the foreground. So maybe like do five or six of the foreground, and then they'll go into the middle of the frame and then even raise it up a bit more and create another five or six images of the sky here. And then you would end up with an image that is not as wide as this, okay? But for this, um, just for the, um, for the sake of this and sh showing you guys the results that you, you get by shooting panoramas, I just wanted to, to show you guys, uh, you know, the, the result when you shoot a bit wider. I'm gonna go into portrait orientation um, a little bit later on because I think that's, that's gonna be where, um, especially from a wildlife point of view, where it really, the magic happens. Okay, let's get into the, to the wildlife side of things. I'm just gonna show you guys um, sort of my way of thinking when it comes to, um, to shooting these panoramas. This is a, a lioness that we had um, recently in, uh, in the Serengeti in Ndutu. And very nice image, just sort of normal landscape mode. But you've got such beautiful trees in that Ndutu area that you know, you want to include more of that and you want to showcase the entire tree and almost show the animal in environment. Now, once again, this is not like something for every single destination, right? Some, some um, areas lend themselves more to sort of showing animals in environment. So like East Africa as a whole, think of those vast open plains, beautiful single trees that you get in the Serengeti and in, uh, at the Ndutu. Um, and also places like the Masa Mara, beautiful, beautiful for that. An incredible place like Mana Pools. You guys have all seen um, those, uh, those images of the elephants in that uh, Alberta forest, beautiful sunsets and things. So that, those are the kind of destinations where these panoramas would work. Okay, so that's, that's one single image there. Now, I'm gonna show you guys once again. Again, this is in landscape, um, shot in landscape just to show you guys the different uh, results. So what I would do, how I would go about starting my panorama is uh, with back button focus. I hope you guys are all familiar with back button focusing. If not, send me a message uh, on here or email me afterwards and I'll happily share those links with you. But with my back button, I would then 
um, get focused on my lioness. So press the back button. It will focus on the lioness. You can take your finger off the back button. She will stay in focus. And then I'll move to the left and start off taking my images like that. Okay, so uh, this is typically where I would start. You see now I'm including more of those trees there. Second image. And what I try and do when I do this is to try and um, keep about a third of the previous frame onto my next frame, if that makes sense. And that just helps um, the, the stitching of the images, which I'm gonna show you now, just helps stitching those images um, together. Three, so it's about four or five images, yeah? So let's, I'm gonna go um, in Lightroom and just show you guys how to do this. So very, very easy. You start off um, with your first image, press the shift button and then click on the last image. Now what, what I would usually do before, like before I'm gonna shoot a panorama is take a photo of my hand or of the ground um, before I start. And then also once I finish, do the same again. It just makes the sorting images within Lightroom a lot easier. But in this particular case, I think <laughs> I got overexcited and uh, now when it comes to wildlife, um, you wanna try and get it as quickly as possible. Okay, so let's, Let's go through that. So once you've selected all your images, you right click and it will give you a whole bunch of options over here. Now towards the middle, you'll see there's photo merge and then panorama. So let's click that. Okay, we'll create a little preview for you. Apologies if this takes a bit of time, it is, uh, it is pretty big files. Okay, now it will give you an image like this, and I hope you guys can, um, can see these corners. Now, obviously, we don't want to bring this into Lightroom as is. We want to get rid of, of some, of these, um, some of these corners. I see your guys' questions there. I'll come back to them now. Um, see these corners over here? This you want to get, uh, get rid of. So Lightroom will give you a few projections. Um, it's just different sort of ways that it puts it together. So... I'll show you guys. Spherical, you'll see it will build a bit of a preview. Okay. Cylindrical, cylindrical just makes it a little bit longer. Uh, and then you get perspective. Okay, so perspective in this case doesn't really work. So I'm going to go with, with cylindrical over here. Now you see, Lightroom will, you can do one of two things. You can either hit the auto crop and Lightroom will put it together for you automatically. But what I personally um, prefer to do is to use this boundary wrap and just to get rid of all those, uh, those white edges and bring it together and just keep the maximum amount of that image as I possibly can. So have a look now when I start putting these images together here. See how it's starting to have a look in the top here. See those white parts are disappearing. Okay, so keep going until you can't see those white bits anymore. It's a little bit still bottom left. So I'll go about there, right? Happy with that. And then simply hit merge. You'll see then it will create the panorama over here. It does take a little bit longer. These are big files. Um, this was, in this particular case, this was shot with the 5D Mark IV. So big files originally to start off with but uh, and not combining what's it, five images, six images together, you're sitting with a, a very big file. So it will take a bit of time um, as it creates this panorama here and it should spit it out over here if all goes to plan. Yes, Peter, that's, um, so Peter um, says, yeah, shooting portrait helps to get more sky, 100% correct. I'm going to be getting to that a little bit later on um, as to why you want to shoot, um, shoot portrait orientation and also show you guys uh, a few examples of that. Let's get to my attributes here. Okay, so there it's created it. Okay, so you can see there's the, um, the final product. And now you can see if I, if I show you guys the difference here, Okay, so there you can see, now all of a sudden you've got a lot more images. You're showing a lot more of the environment in there. Um, and it's, um, 
I mean, for me, this tells a lot more of a story, especially if you've got those clouds coming into your frame, you've got more trees in the back, so it just shows the animal in environment a lot better. Um, again, nothing wrong with, with something like this, but also think about, think about it from a, from a printing point of view, right? So imagine you want to print um, this massive image on your wall. Now, all of a sudden, you've got the six images combined. You can print this image as big as you want. Um, which is another great benefit for, uh, for shooting panoramas. Now I'm going to take you guys to, um, to another, sorry, I just want to see these um, questions that are coming up here. Do, 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 do. Let's chat. This is happening in, in, in my library model. Yes, uh, Monique, that's correct. So in my library model here, you select all of your images. I'll, I'll go through that again. I'll, I'll do a couple of these um, um, of these sort of images stitched together. Yes, but yeah, this is all in the in the library module. Okay. Now I'm going to take you guys to another scene. I absolutely loved this this particular moment. So that's that's the image that I got of, of a lioness. Um, shortly before this, there was actually a herd of elephants that chased the upper tree. Now, I think it's vital also when you think of shooting panoramas, why, like a lot of people will ask, why would you shoot panoramas uh, and not rather just sort of, you know, zoom out and create everything, you know, shoot, shoot a wider, wider image. And there's quite a few answers for this. Um, one of them being that you might not, might not necessarily have the lens with you to shoot that wide. On this particular morning, the widest lens I had with me was 100 to 400. Um, I left my 70 to 200 and 24 to 70 at camp. Anyways, I don't want to talk about it. It's a bit of a sensitive subject. But this is the widest image I could get. You now you can see shooting in portrait orientation, right? And I think it's important when, you, when you're shooting um, these panoramas is that you have identifiable features. You know, ideally, at least with this image, you could see, still see that it's a lioness. But if she stands up, and that image just becomes so much more powerful. If you had to shoot this particular scene super wide, maybe with like a 16 to 35, your subject here, your lioness will become so small, it almost gets lost in your frame. Okay, so, and, and then also, you know, like, like I spoke about the, um, the possibilities of then combining those images when you create a panorama to print it, you're sitting with six or eight or 10 images instead of one. So much bigger file sizes if you then want to go and print them. Okay, so again, I went, um, perfect opportunity that your lioness wasn't, wasn't moving. So one, again, focusing on her, but this time in portrait orientation, back button focus, let go of the back button, she will stay in focus, start off with the left, and then create about a third of the previous frame. Okay. So go all the way across and let me then show you guys the final product. I'm not sure if you guys can see that in, in full screen, but let me keep it like this. Um, so that's, that's the end result then of the panorama. I haven't edited this particular image just yet, but you can see it's a lot more showing the environment. There's beautiful trees, the sky was building up beautifully. Um, and that for me just showcases the scene so much better. You can also see now by shooting in portrait orientation, you're getting this beautiful foreground with the, the, the flowers, the lush green vegetation. But again, you're also getting more of that sky in as well. So a lot of the people think, you know, when they shoot panoramas, they immediately think landscape. But actually by turning your camera into portrait, you, you're getting more image basically, if, if that makes any sense. Okay, so let's go out of this. Um, okay, so to show, show you guys there. And then the scene started unfolding. All right, so this is then with the lioness sort of with the head up a little bit. You can see now the identifiable features are just so much stronger. She's got her head up, she's looking. Um, and this was shortly before the elephant started coming in. I'll take you guys a little bit further over here. So then, then we got this. Now, now, now you can see 
I was freaking out at this stage because I knew I just had too much focal length and um, I wasn't going to be able to capture all of this, especially when the elephants come a little bit closer. So that's the image zoomed out all the way at, um, at 100 mils. You can still see um, there's a nice bit of interaction between the lioness and the elephants. But again, I wanted to include that whole tree. Like I mentioned, the, the, the sky in the back was really starting to, to build up. There's a massive storm building up. Um, and then with, with something like this, you've obviously got to be a, a lot faster with your panoramas. And that just comes with, with practice. So I just want to see there's uh, more questions coming up here. Okay, I'll get to your questions soon. Uh, let's see. Thank you very much. Right. Okay, so I'll get to all your questions very soon. Okay, so as I mentioned, in this particular scene, I desperately wanted you, you guys saw that previous photo I showed, beautiful tree, beautiful sky, beautiful surroundings. Um, if, I had, if I had shot just in portrait, that's I would have, what I would have had. You know, again, it's a nice bit of interaction, but just a bit too close, not really showcasing the entire scene. Then things started getting real. Okay, there's her sort of starting to stand up, moving about. Now with something like this, it's obviously it's very difficult. She's, she's moving around quite a bit. You've got to be super fast. So here's a particular scene. I saw her getting up. So I started focusing on her, move to the left as quickly as possible. Boom, 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 boom. And create about five or six images. And then that's the one that, one of the ones that I ended up. It's not my favorite one yet. I'll show you guys. Um, the one that came in next, but just compare, just want to show you guys the comparison between, oh, let's just do that, let's just put them next to each other. So you can see now, again, a lot more environment, a lot more interesting. Um, and again, like I mentioned, if you want to now print this much bigger file, you can print it pretty much as big as you'd like. Okay. And then this is the scene that started getting, getting interesting. I'm gonna show you guys now how, um, how to go about it. Um, here's another one. So you see just a split second where her head wasn't quite sort of turning, uh, turning sideways. She was just about to turn and it's literally a split second. And that's why with a scene like this, keep on going, keep on shooting because that small split second can be the difference between a, a good image and a fantastic image. Um, okay, here's, I think this is the one I was looking, looking for. Right, so now you can see her head's up, she's looking, the elephants are there. And I stitched this together. And this was the, this is the end result. So I've edited this image, you can see that sky was starting to, to become super impressive. And, and that's, you know, that's essentially why you want to do panoramas, is to include more of that sky to, to showcase more of that scene. Again, people will say, well, you can just zoom out. You can, you know, you can use a, a, a 16, to, uh, 16 to 35 or 17 to 40 mil. You can do that, but then you run the risk of your lioness also just sort of becoming lost in that image. Also, just for a second, think about your depth of field that you, that you can create with going in a little bit closer. Now, you guys know that if you zoom a little bit closer, your depth of field becomes, uh, it gets enhanced a lot more, right? So if I, for example, if I had a 16 to 35 um, and I shot out wide at like F4, there will still be some of that in focus. Because so if I go in, if I zoom in closer at, um, at 100 mils or 200 mils, for example, and still shot at F4, your background will naturally become a lot more blurred. I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so that is probably one of my favorite images that I've taken in, in a long time. But there, there's another take on this, and I'm, I'm going to be going through the, um, just sort of putting it together soon. But imagine now in a scene like this, if you had the time, you know, if, if this was just a leopard um, sitting, sitting up in a tree or a lioness up in the tree and she wasn't moving, you could 
So I, I did, uh, I think it's five or six images, right? Just portraits. So one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. You can also you know, go do more. So take one image or one sort of row just of the sky, then one row just of the middle, then one row just of the bottom. It takes a little bit more time, but you know, then again, you, you've got more images that you're stacking together and you could possibly even then create, get more of the sky in. Again, in this particular case, nerves did get, be did get better of me, I won't lie. Um, and I just try to do it as quickly as I possibly could um, to get this all in. Okay, so let's, let's go about um, putting one of these images together. So again, in my, in my library module, once again, like I said, I'll try and take an image of the ground or of my hand before and after. But, you know, when it comes to wildlife like this, you kind of um, just rush in and try and get it done as quickly as you possibly can. So let's go through this. And this is now taken in portrait. So I click on my first one. I hold shift in. Click on the last one of my, of my sequence. Right click. And I'm going to go to photo merge and then panorama. Okay, again, it will create that preview. While it's creating that preview, I'm gonna have a look at some of these questions. Um, so Ida asks, the fact that you are moving without a tripod, but still the picture is clear, does it mean you really have to make sure to move slowly? Um, Ida, yes. I think when it comes to wildlife, also make sure that you've got a, a fast shutter speed. So I'll have a look for you in this particular case, but I think I was around about that 800, to a thousandth of a second. So generally with wildlife, you want to shoot nice and fast shutter speeds. And then I just try and sort of have um, some sort of indicator. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. Lightroom does a very good job in stitching it together. But just sort of have some sort of um, line that you can work on, whether it be the top of the tree or the line nest uh, as sort of a line to, to, um, to work towards. And then I try and include about a third of my previous frame in it just to help with the stitching, stitching together. If you jump across too much, then you know some parts of the branches or things might uh, it might not be able to stitch it so neatly. Okay, again, I'm going to go with cylindrical um, with this. I'm, I can show you guys what the others do. Spherical should bring it a little bit sort of narrower, a little bit more landscapey almost in a way. Uh, cylindrical, a little bit higher up. Uh, and perspective also just stretches it out a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to go with cylindrical. Again, you can go auto crop, which brings it in together, but I'm going to try and maximize um, as much information as I possibly can here just by doing this boundary wrap. You see, as I pull it, um, some of those white bits will go, um, will go away. Almost a little bit at the top there. So about there, okay? and then we merge it together. You'll see over here, it will create the panorama. Again, give it some time. It does, does take a while, especially you know, when you've, um, you've got a few images that you, you're putting it together. Uh, Peter asked a question here, do you process the photos before or after stitching? Uh, Peter, personally, I would, um, I would do it afterwards. Um, otherwise, you know, you, you think, it, especially, you know, if, if you, if you're just dealing with one part of the frame, you know, you, don't, you haven't got the sky and things in there. So I would first put it all together. Once I then know I've got my sky, my foreground, I can then balance it all together uh, once it's all been st stitched together, if that makes sense. Um, I think, yeah, if, if, you, if you do it um, sort of before you stitch it together, you might sort of enhance exposure and things like that. Um, that might affect your skies or your subject. Okay, so I hope, I hope that helps. <clears throat> uh, UV asks, would you say 70 to 200 more lens is good for shooting panoramas? Or would you prefer something a little bit wider, like a 24 to 70 or even wider? Um, UV, I think it, it depends what you're doing. I think if, it, if it's landscape, then obviously you want to do it a little bit wider. But for wildlife, I've really enjoyed going in a little bit closer. I've even been using um, fixed 300s, fixed 400s, even fixed 600 more lenses to do panoramas. 
Um, because a lot of times we don't think about it. You know, you think you've got this, um, this close up, um, this, this big lens, you can shooting close up, you think, oh goodness, I can't, you know, I can't create anything with this. But even if the lightness is lying down right next to your vehicle, you can still create the panorama by shooting in portrait, taking one, one shot of the nose, one of the eyes, one of the feet, and you can combine that all together. And so um, for wildlife, I actually prefer the, the longer lenses. Also your depth of field, like I mentioned, um, you can play around with that a lot more. I think for a lot of the scenes, if you go too wide from a wildlife point of view, you run the risk of losing your subject um, in the image. Okay, so that's the, that's the image that I combined, I think. Okay. Why is it doing that? No, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one that I combined. So I'm going to show you guys the difference, okay, between, sorry, I just lost myself here for a minute. Um, yeah, between that and this one here. Okay, so this one here shot in with the panoramas in portrait orientation. So you've got the beautiful foreground, you've got that beautiful sky in there. And again, it just showcases the scene a lot more um, from that point of view. Okay, so um, I hope you guys are starting to understand you know, why these, uh, these panoramas are so valuable. I don't know how many of you guys actually um, end up printing images, but I think definitely if you, if you wanted to print something really, really big, then panoramas is definitely the way to go. So I got, <laughs> I got about halfway through um, trying to stitch these, these together. But, you know, so you can do something like that. So go in really close, take a photo of that, um, take a photo of the top there, and then sort of at the bottom and stitch them together. Unfortunately, in, in this particular case, um, I didn't get that far because things were happening and, yeah. Uh, let me just, I've lost my attributes now. I'm just gonna move this away. Let's get to my attributes. All right. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's the, last, uh, the last panorama that I did. Also a great thing, if you guys have been to the, if you've uh, been to the Great Migration, you'll notice that I mean, there's often huge, huge, huge herds um, and then to try and capture them in all in one image is almost impossible. So we, we chat about this quite a lot, is how can you actually, you know, show the, like the amount of animals that are in a particular scene just by one image. And it, it's virtually pretty much impossible, right? So in this, I'm going to show you guys again, portrait orientation, how I've actually, I haven't sort of stitched this one together yet. So I'm quite interested to see how it's going to come out. So start off with one to the left, work your way across again, you know, shooting in portrait orientation because of these beautiful skies that I've got in there. Okay, so let's, let's go through that one again and merge that together. So click on my first one and then I'm going to click on my last one, right click, uh, photo merge and then into panorama. So you'll see, once you start doing a few of these, your computer does take a bit of strain. Okay, so let's have a look. Spherical. Cylindrical, I think perspective might actually be nice with this. Mm, maybe not quite. Let's stick with uh, cylindrical with this particular case. Uh, and again, I'm gonna do the boundary wraps. So I get rid of all those, those white parts. Keep going. Yeah, I was a bit skew with my uh, with my horizons on this. Very simple, and then hit photo merge, it'll start coming together. So the reason why it's not uh, popping out here, I've actually um, I've added attributes for this for, for this particular webinar. So that's why it's uh, it's shooting it back into my um, into my uh, sort of develop module. Let's just give that some time. If you guys have any questions, feel free to, to fire away.
Yeah, just reading through. Thanks, Alyssa. Alyssa says beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, UV understood, makes sense. Thank you so much. Great stuff, UV. Glad I can help. And Ada said very clear. Great stuff. So um, it seems like um, everyone is understanding this a lot better now, which is great. It's, uh, I hope a lot of you guys will uh, put this into practice. Hopefully, pretty soon we can get out to the field again. Otherwise, I'm going to start doing panoramas on my kids pretty soon. <laughs> Um, also, something interesting about this is I, I actually didn't know about this until uh, like a, a few weeks ago. You can, your panorama, it doesn't actually only stitch sort of in landscape mode, but you can also uh, stitch vertically. So if you're shooting uh, panoramas, think maybe of, of the Milky Way, some of you guys can maybe do when you're at home now, is um, photograph the Milky Way and sort of shoot it um, in portrait mode. And Lightroom can actually stitch it together that way as well then. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so here's the, here's the panorama then. Okay, so that actually didn't come out too badly. I'm gonna uh, go to the, let me just give us an attribute quickly. Let's go to my attributes here. Do. Where did my zebra photos go now? Oh, I see, when you're under pressure. <laughs> That's very strange. Hmm. Okay, I'll have to uh, look where that has disappeared to. That's very strange. Hmm. Okay, anyways, moving on. <laughs> um, and, and another time when it's absolutely incredible to do um, these panoramas is when you get these moody skies and East Africa, if you guys have been to the Masai Mara, if you've been to the Serengeti, you'll know that the skies are just mind blowing. The skies always just seem bigger over there than, uh, than anywhere else. So this is a, again, a, a single frame and it doesn't showcase an entire scene. And in this particular case, this elephant was, was fairly stationary, just going about his business, grazing away. And I'm not going to show you guys the difference here between shooting in landscape and then shooting in portrait orientation. So like I've, like I showed you guys, I've been doing, um, sort of selecting all the files, merging it together. And this is what you get from a landscape point of view. And, um, again, very wide and not really sort of including as much sky as you possibly want, but by shooting in portrait orientation, let me show you guys the difference. Let's put them next to each other. So now you can see, so this is obviously the one at the top, that's the one that I've shot in landscape orientation, and then the one at the bottom shooting in portrait. So you're just basically getting more image out of it. And again, showcasing, there's a beautiful rain coming down in certain parts, dark moody skies. So just showcasing your scenes a, a lot better. I'm gonna try and get that, uh, Try and get that elephant, uh, I mean, that zebra one for you guys. It's really, really going to annoy me. Uh, while we're doing that, let's just see the questions here. Why do you like the boundary wrap better than the auto crop? Is it more exact in the cropping? Um, Alyssa, yes, it is. Um, I mean, the, the auto crop does, does a great job, but it sometimes, with the boundary wrap, it, it sometimes doesn't take it all the way to 100%. So you're just keeping as much of that uh, information in there as you possibly can. Um, there's nothing, nothing wrong with doing the auto crop. It's just personal preference. I like using the, the boundary wrap um, a, lot, a lot better. Pedro asked, if the zebras were moving more, I imagine it would, be, would not be possible to merge. Absolutely, 100% correct, Pedro. So that's, you know, um, think about, you know, if, you, if, you, if you've got like a river crossing, for example, I'm not sure if you've, if you've seen a river crossing before, but you know, it happens so quickly. The animals are diving in. And, and there's, there's a lot of movement, right? So to try and sort of stitch that together, especially if you're going in close, you know, you're gonna have movements and you're gonna have some weird looking um, wildebeest and zebras. So generally when these big herds are grazing on the open plains, they don't move as quickly. Um, so they, I mean, they might move a little bit and, and just graze along, but they don't, they don't run as such. So it's, it's actually not that difficult to create those panoramas. I'm going to try and see, sorry guys, bear with me for a, for a split second here. I'm just going to try and see why that 
zebra image doesn't come up. It was, um, okay, here it is. So it's somehow taking itself off attributes. Let's, let's have a look if it works now. Uh, let's go attributes. Okay, so there it is. So you can see, I mean, the, these guys here were obviously standing, standing quite still. Um, there's a bit of movement in there, but if we go in close, you see the, it's actually done a fantastic job in, uh, in putting it together. I don't see any zebras with three heads or four tails or anything like that. So, um, but it's also, you know, like I said, the, the more you do this um, shooting panoramas, the quicker you become with it. So in this particular case, I can actually, if I hit I on both times, I can show you guys um, what my settings were there. So shutter speed was still fast at about 2,000th of a second. You can see I was using a 100 to 400 millimeter lens and I was at 153 mils. So pretty, pretty close in. And I was even with this, I was shooting at F13. So I was combining, I think it's seven or eight different images at F13, which meant I've got a lot of depth of field going on um, at the back here. Uh, and it also meant, uh, so in this particular case, I think my focus point would have probably been this one in the middle here. One of these zebras here. So back button focus on that, um, on this particular zebra, move to the left and start and go and create my panorama. Again, including about a third of my previous frame, just to help the stitching together. And you can even see like these guys close to each other here. They, Lightroom has actually done a, a pretty amazing job in, in stitching it together. There's no sort of overlapping, or anything like that. It's, uh, it's so easy, guys. It really is easy. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's, that's sort of when I would do, I would do panoramas. Again, just wanted to um, show you guys again, the difference between the, um, the landscape and, and portrait orientation mode. Okay, so shooting portrait, a lot more um, sky involved, a lot more foreground. Um, and you can actually almost combine more images this way. So I'm gonna, to try and sum it up for you guys, it's just um, sort of the, the important um, aspects to remember when you're shooting panoramas. I think first of all, you gotta have a subject that is relatively stationary. And also you wanna have those um, identifiable features. So, you know, if your line is in a tree like it was in that um, one of those images I showed you, the difference between that line nest looking to the side all the way so you can get identifiable features of the face compared to when she was lying down. Those small sort of split second moments can be massive in taking your image from a, from a good image to a great image. Then another important thing to remember is to shoot in, um, in portrait orientation, back button focusing. If you guys, again, if you haven't, if you haven't used back button focusing or you're not familiar with that, and you can either ask me um, on, this, uh, on this webinar now, or I can um, send you a few links on that. So very important back button focusing, portrait orientation, focus on your subject, let go, your subject will stay in focus, and from the left, start your panorama. Okay, and then very important to include about a third of your previous frame, just to help with that stitching together. I think, especially if you have a busy scene, like you've got trees and a lot of branches going out, or like that zebra image I showed you, if you have a lot of subjects on there, if you don't include some of your previous frame, that stitching together process might be a little bit difficult and it, it might sort of miss a few links uh, here or there. Um, and then, yeah, if you, like, I mean, the putting it together in Lightroom is, is pretty straightforward as you guys saw. Um, I'll open it up for, for Q&A now. If you guys have any questions, then please fire away. I'm gonna try and go through them. Let me see what other questions there are here. Um, Charlotte asks, is it difficult to use panoramas on Instagram? Um, for, for posting purposes, no, you, it's not difficult at all. I think a lot of the, one of the big reasons why a lot of people haven't done that is 
if you're shooting like a very sort of narrow, almost like a 16 by nine type image, you don't get as much screen time as they call it. So your image does appear a little bit smaller. Um, and for some reason, a lot of people feel that, you know, you don't get the amount of, of likes and things like that on, on that particular image as you would on like a four by five portrait image, which just um, shows a bit bigger on your screen uh, or on your, on your phone for that matter. But 100%, you can put panoramas in, in Lightroom. Very, very cool. I'm actually gonna be posting my uh, lion and elephant image maybe sometime this week, which will be a panorama, of course. Um, and what you can even do, even though you've shot a panorama, you can still uh, crop it at a, like a, a five by seven landscape crop and will still show fairly, fairly decently on your, on your Instagram. Hope, hope that helps. Um, Becky asks, Becky, how's it going, man? Uh, if you took the pictures for the panorama, but have another picture of the animal you like better, you didn't take in the sequence, could you insert it? Assuming that the lighting exactly, et cetera, is the same. Like if you have a better photo of the lioness taking another sequence, you like it better. Yes, 100%. So what, what uh, Becky is basically saying that um, in that, uh, so let's go back to that line image quickly. Um, so let's do, so basically Becky is saying, where's that image? So in this particular case here, if I had another photo of this line nest, maybe sort of looking up, yes, you could use it if she was by herself in this particular case. The, the problem, and I, I've tried it, um, I've tried cheating with this on, on a few occasions. Maybe, maybe I might give it another go, but often then these elephants here don't line up. So um, because, you know, in my, because I shot portrait, I would have had this lioness with it, one of these elephants in the foreground. So, you know, by adding another image where she was looking in a different direction, there's also a chance where, you know, these elephants, their body position would have been in a different way as well. So it doesn't quite, uh, quite work. Yes, 100%. If these elephants were not here, you can definitely do that. You can almost, in that particular scenario, take a photo of your, of your lioness first and then sort of start with, uh, with the rest of your, of your scene. And then you can actually take your time. You can make sure you've got your lioness and then you can take another panorama where you just Sort of have this tree and the sky as one particular image and just do a row of sky images that you combine again and, and that's what a lot of the landscape photographers would do you know they would they would do a whole row maybe five or six images just of the sky then five or six images just of you know of the mountain or whatever was here and then five or six images of the foreground and, and then you sort of combine it into one massive image so yes, 100%, you, you can do that. Um, but like I said, unfortunately for me, in this particular scenario, it, it didn't work out. I think the closest I got was probably, probably this one here. Um, again, guys, I mean, with, with wildlife, you know, a lot of these things happen so quickly that, you know, th there is a, a fair element of, of luck involved. But what I, what I wanted to really sort of achieve with this is just to, to give you guys a bit of food for thought in, in um, when you can do these uh, particular panoramas. Okay. Linda, I know you're watching, so um, hopefully we can try this if all goes well when we um, eventually get to Mana Pools at some stage. I haven't actually done this in, in Mana, just waiting for the right, the right moment, but can you imagine if you have, have an elephant in that, um, in that Alberta forest, you know, instead of going really wide, going closer, and then including that Albert of Forest in there, I think it'll be simply spectacular. Right, guys, I hope, um, I hope that helped. I um, hope you guys learned something from that. Um, I'll leave this open for a few more minutes just to, to see if there are any other questions. Um, but I hope this has brought some value to you guys. It's, um, it's a fun thing. It really is a lot of fun to, um, to do out in the field. Let's see if there's any other questions here. Can you please send the link for the back button focus? Um, Sanut, yes, 100%. Um, if you guys have any questions with this, especially regarding um, back button focusing or um, 
or panoramas, or if you actually want to do this on a one-on-one -on -one basis, more than happy to, to assist. Send me an email. It's Johan, so J-O-H-A-N at wild-eye.co.za. Happy to help you guys. Um, yeah, this is, um, this is just one of the ways that we can, we can add some value to you guys and, and, and just sort of help you during this time. I think it's a great time for all of us to learn. Uh, Ida says you should print the one of the lions and Ellie's spectacular. Thank you so much. I actually wanted to, um, and just sort of very off the subject now, we, we were supposed to move into our new house and I had all these plans of uh, printing a few of these photos, but now obviously with lockdown, not moving anywhere. So thank you so much. I, I'll definitely, definitely be able to, uh, we're definitely going to be printing that, that image um, as soon as this whole lockdown thing is finished. Um, I don't see any other questions there. So I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for, um, for taking the time to watch this. Like I said, if you have any questions, happy to answer them on, uh, on email. And also if you have, if you want to do one-on-one -on -one sessions with this particular stuff in Lightroom, please give me a shout. Happy practicing out there and uh, look forward to seeing some of your results. Until next time, I'll be doing a, a webinar tomorrow on um, different seasons in Safari. So same time, different seasons on Safari. I think that'll be an interesting one. And um, so look forward to seeing you guys all there. Till next time, cheers.